There's nothing quite like the feeling of ditching an aging hard drive or small SATA drive and swapping it for a speedy high capacity NVMe SSD fit for your entire game library and a little more. But how do you go about this great feat? Well, it's all rather simple actually. You should be done in well under half an hour if you follow our simple steps to installing an M.2 SSD. So let's get right to it. We'll start off with the simple process of installing the drive. After that, stick around for tips on choosing the right M.2 SSD for you, there are many options available, what they mean for performance, and migrating your files swiftly and easily between drives. We'll also crack some timestamps in the description below if you want to skip ahead. First things first, find out if your laptop has an available M.2 SSD socket or slot free. The easiest way to find out whether your laptop has an available M.2 socket is to visit your laptop product page. If you want to be doubly sure, however, unscrew the underside panel of your laptop and take a look for yourself. Follow a teardown guide for your laptop if you're unsure of how to go about this, and iFixit guides are usually exceptionally helpful. Also, before you start tinkering, make note of any warranties you may be voiding in the process too. Once you've exposed the innards of your laptop, you want to look out for this here connector. It's not much to write home about, but it's easy to spot if you keep an eye out for the screw holes protruding from one side. If you're lucky, you'll have a couple of M.2 slots like this here chunky gaming laptop. Most modern laptops, however, may feature only a single M.2 slot, and it may already be occupied. Not to worry, we'll go through how to migrate your files easily and cheaply later in this here video. Once again, timestamps below. To install your SSD, unscrew the small cross screw located in one of the available holes on the motherboard and put it somewhere safe. You really don't want to drop it, trust. Depending on the size of your drive, you may need to unscrew both the screw and the riser located on the board. This can be shifted to any of the corresponding holes depending on the size of your M.2 drive. Grab your shiny M.2 and slot it in. An M.2 drive will only go in one way, so make sure to line up the socket with the break in the pins on the SSD. The SSD is initially mounted at an angle and once in place can be pressed down to the board and screwed down to secure. Done. There are three things to consider to look out for in relation to any M.2 slot, size, key, and interface. It can sound daunting with so many options, but rarely will you have to consider anything outside of the norm. First off, size. There are various types of SSD in the M.2 form factor to choose from, but when you get down to it, there's usually only one to consider, which is this one, 2280. The first pair of digits represents the width of the drive in millimeters, 22, and the second, the length of the drive, in this case, 80. Whilst there are typically three sizes of M.2 SSD, 2242, 2260, and 2280, the most commonly utilized by the most manufacturers is the latter. That's the default for just about every device outside of very compact laptops, and the most common slot you'll find under the hood of a gaming laptop. The second thing to look out for is the key. This one should be relatively straightforward. There are 11 different key options technically floating around, but only one that is ubiquitous with PCIe by 4 and SATA drives key M. Pretty much every drive from every popular manufacturer you'll find online will be fitted with an M key. Some SATA drives might be listed as B plus M key, but these will also fit any regular M key socket just fine, so nothing to worry about there. Lastly, there are two types of interface common to client rigs, SATA and NVMe, otherwise referred to as PCIe. We're going to assume you're looking for the latest super fast NVMe drive here today. Those offer blistering speeds reaching up to 5,000 megabytes per second. PCIe NVMe drives come in a couple of flavors, PCIe 2.0, 3.0, and 4.0. The most commonly found across today's top drives is PCI 3.0 by 4, which offers plenty of bandwidth for most users' needs. Only AMD's latest Ryzen processors support the bandwidth of PCIe 4.0, but these aren't too common in laptops. No need to splash out on one of these drives just yet. SATA SSDs, on the other hand, utilize the same interface as most 2.5-inch SSD drives and are limited to 600 megabytes per second. These will be a mighty improvement over traditional hard drives in terms of system responsiveness and transfer speeds, but fall short of bandwidth available via the PCIe interface. Once again, it's best and easiest to check your laptop spec to find out what your device supports. Not all M.2 drives support PCIe, and some will max out at SATA speed. Make sure to double check everything here before hitting purchase. You don't want to be buying a fancy new SSD to find out it is hampered by your slot, or worse, straight up doesn't work. There's a very high chance that your laptop has a single M.2 SSD slot as the sole storage medium, likely occupied by a low capacity OEM drive. But therein lies a conundrum. There's no way to transfer the files on that drive across to the new drive with only a single socket available to you. If you've got an external drive big enough, you might want to use this as an intermediary between the two, 
copy your important files you want to keep over to the external drive, create a USB Windows installation media drive. And once that's all done, swap the drives, install Windows on the new SSD in your machine and copy the files from your external drive over. It's not pretty or simple, but it works. If you don't have a drive lying around, however, our solution will not only make this process a little easier and quicker, but also net you a nice new external drive in the process. Plus it's relatively cheap too. Rather than buy external storage, we recommend you pick up an external USB M.2 drive enclosure. A quick search via a retailer online will bring up options galore, some as cheap as $15. Install your shiny new drive into the enclosure, plug it in, and use the free Macroom Reflect tool available online to clone your existing boot drive. Once completed, remove the new drive from the external enclosure and the old drive from your laptop, switch them around, and boot the PC with the new drive installed. Leave the external drive disconnected this first boot. Everything should be just where you left it and ready to go on the new drive. Once you're confident the new drive is stable and working as intended, you can plug in the M.2 external drive and format it. We recommend waiting a little while before carrying the step out just to be on the safe side and to ensure your files are all intact from the cloning process. Once completed, you've got a shiny new drive in your machine, all your old files and installs, and a convenient speedy external SSD that puts the otherwise redundant old drive to good use. So I do hope that's given you all the information you need on choosing and installing an M.2 SSD. If you want more guidance on SSD performance by brand and model, make sure to check out all our reviews and guides over at PCGamesN.com. But before you leave, if you did enjoy today's video, then please lightly tap the like button, subscribe, and all that nice stuff. Thanks for watching, good luck, and I'll see you next time.